As we, the fans of Arrested Development, anxiously await part two of season five to drop on Netflix, let's take a look back at all the seasons of Arrested Development and reflect and rank them worst to best. How would you rank all the seasons of Arrested Development? Let's talk about it in the comments. <laughs> Welcome to Durbania, I'm Durbin, and this is my ranking of all the seasons of Arrested Development, worst to best. I love this show, so I'm excited for any excuse I could possibly have to dive into this show and talk about it. Yes! So I just finished part one of season five, which means it's ranking time. It's time to go back and see how does it fall with the rest of the seasons. How would you rank all the seasons of Arrested Development? Let's talk about it in the comments. Number six. Season four, the original cut. Yeah, number six, this should be number five, right? Because there's only five seasons of Arrested Development thus far. But it's number six because there's two versions of season four up there. So this is the original cut version that I'm ranking as my least favorite season of Arrested Development. And I think the reason I'm ranking it here is because I had such high expectations for this and I was so excited, and my friend the Cello Nerd, he was super excited about it too, and we binged this show together and were both incredibly deflated by the time this show ended. I mean, I think the first biggest problem was the timeline, like the way that each episode was focused on a particular Bluth, and so, you know, I know there was reasons for that, and legit reasons, like, you know, scheduling conflicts, getting all these actors together, and so yeah, knowing that it is creative what they did, but it just, the whole Bluth family dynamic that made the show what it is just to me did not feel present. And so it was just very odd to me what they did with the timeline and all that stuff. I mean, you got that first episode centered on Michael Bluth. So first what we got to do is we got to go all the way back to the end of season three and see where we left off. Then we got to do all kinds of flashbacks to catch us up to how we got to where we are now. And then all these other episodes were moving forward sideways and this way and that way. I don't know. It felt kind of convoluted and messy to me and it was very hard uh, to get back into the show. There were still a lot of great funny moments like Joe hanging out with Steve Holt but he didn't even realize that this was Steve Holt. Here he is telling his son I'm gonna meet you at this bar but he didn't even recognize his son because now he's older so obviously they haven't seen each other in a long time so like yeah there's a lot of really hysterical moments in season four so I don't look at this original cut and say oh I hate it and it's terrible I mean that's not where I'm at at all. There's still a lot of great and funny moments and things like that I mean, come on, Tobias putting together the Fantastic Four play, it's freaking hysterical. Tobias getting in trouble in a how to catch a predator scenario because he never got that tape recorder just to record himself while he's talking during the day. Well, technically one of the episodes he did, but he paid no attention to it. And so he just says the dumbest things in the dumbest ways and gets himself in all kinds of trouble. Sometimes I just feel bad for Tobias. I just do. Anyway, so season four did have a lot of very hysterical moments, but that original cut, it just felt so messy to me with the timeline. It was really hard to follow it and put it together. The Cholo Nerd and I did. We followed it and we were able to put it together. It just felt like it took more effort than was needed. Number five, season four, the remix. When they did the remix of season four, I mean, it is, it's the same season four, but in so many ways, it feels so different. So number one, I felt like it cleaned things up a lot. So the timeline was a lot smoother. It was a lot easier to follow. It was so much easier to see where we were at the end of season three, building us back up to where we are now and all the stuff that they did. Plus the way they edited it, the season became the length of like a typical season of Arrested Development when it first aired. And so it felt like it gave it plenty of time, you know, to work better. And, and the way it was edited, I know all the blues still weren't together, but instead of having one episode dedicated to one Bluth, it was just much better this way because, yeah, multiple Bluths in a episode. So in some ways, it felt like that dynamic was returning that we had in those original seasons. So that was really cool. So there's a lot of things about the remix that I like better. Oh, and the theme they tied around it, Fateful Consequences. And so by tying it together with that theme, it now tells your brain as you're watching it this way, you're looking for that theme of their bad choices and the consequences of those choices. And so like tying it together that way with that nice little bow, it, it, it helped. It really did help. And so it also got me more excited for season five, especially once again, when we got towards the end of season four and Lucille two, like 
like laying at the bottom of the stair car, blood all over the place, and then she's gone, and Buster being arrested, what's gonna happen to Buster and all that stuff, so yeah, it did a lot better job of cleaning things up and getting me more excited for season five. Number four, season five. Now, if you go over and check out my spoiler talk review of this season, you note in the comments sections, there's there's people that really like this season and a lot of people that passionately hated this season. I actually do understand both sides of the coin on that one. I do fall on the side that likes season five. Now, if you want more details on my thoughts of season five and things like that, definitely check out that spoiler talk. I go into more depth and more details about that. But here's what I'll say really lightly. One of the reasons that I fell on the positive side of season five is this. My expectations were really low. Even though I really liked the remix of season four a lot better and it got me more excited for the fifth season, going in, my expectations were really low. So coming back into this and having this show open like so much cleaner without so many flashbacks and a convoluted timeline and things like that, this show opening so much cleaner already won me over like that. And then kind of having a lot of that original Blue Family dynamic back won me over even more. So like, I was really excited to have so much of that back. Now, it wasn't like the complete original Bluth family dynamic, and I don't think we're ever going to be able to return to that. Either way, I still had a lot more fun with season five than I was expecting to have. Now, when I heard that that was only half of season five and the second half is dropping later, I got really excited because I felt like a lot of season five was a ramp up to things like Lucille 2, Buster escaping prison and all kinds of crazy things like that. Where are they gonna go with all this stuff and what's gonna happen? So I thought they did a lot of really good buildup and I was really hoping they'd get renewed for a sixth season. So knowing that like part two of season five is coming, makes me feel better because I know I'm going to get answers to all that stuff. But then as soon as I was relieved and knew that was coming, suddenly this other thought struck me and I went, wait, why not just put all 16 episodes together? You just ruined the momentum. Like when you really look at it and that those first eight episodes, it's building a momentum. There's a lot of stuff being built and then all of a sudden it's interrupted. And it's weird because like, I almost didn't mind it when I was watching it thinking that was the end of season five, even though I was a little disappointed and I was like begging that they get renewed. But now that I know a second half is coming, I had relief and then I had anger like, wait, there was a good momentum here. What is the thinking behind cutting that apart and stopping that momentum? So when the second half of season five drops, I'm not gonna start with that new episode. I'm gonna go back and start season five from the beginning and binge it that way so I can see what this whole thing feels like without the momentum being interrupted. So it might be a little longer before I do that review of the complete season five, but that is what I'm gonna do because now all I can think about is, you interrupted something. Why did you interrupt it? Give me the episodes now, come on. Number three, season three. I do love the original three seasons of this show. This show is fantastic. Some of my favorite stuff in season three, you got Tobias, GVH, Graf vs. Host. I love the trouble that this dude gets himself into. And the hilarity of the fact that he has hair plugs and his body's not rejecting the hair plugs. The hair plugs are rejecting his body. I mean, these are classic, hysterical, arrested development scenarios the types of things that i love that made this show the show how awesome is it when you're watching season three and you could tell when they knew the show was getting canceled because they start weaving jokes of the show's impending cancellation into the show like there's michael bluth and george senior talking about the save our bluths dinner and they're talking about how about the hbo is there a place where us at the hbo the home builders organization well, I think at this dinner, it's showtime. Yeah, showtime. We should have a show, a song and a dance. So like the hilarity of them playing with that, like I just, that's what I loved about Arrested Development. How a lot of times they would start a running gag before the gag. And then you would have the gag and then they would continue the running gag after that. Then you go back and you watch the season again and then you have the gag already started before you actually have the gag. And then it's freaking hilarious. And so the, the classic stuff that they would do with that show, it's just... Awesome. Number two, season one. Season one is a great opening to the show. It is a great introduction to the Bluth family. So many great moments. I mean, so many things to get you hooked right off the bat. I mean, you have Tobias, who's this therapist. It was just this totally like blind, clueless dude. And now he thinks the universe is telling him to be an actor. And so he's pursuing it and he's so freaking terrible. You have George Michael and maybe his crush on his cousin begins because she kisses him because we gotta go ahead and, and, and teach our family a lesson. And it makes you wonder why, 
why is his family so big and we gotta teach each other lessons? And then you get in the whole plot line of the one-armed man and his arm getting ripped off and how George Sr. tortured his kids with this guy's arm being ripped off to teach his kids lessons so that they would stick. No, 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 no. That's why you don't yell. <laughs> and then you have George Sr. in prison loving it. Like he's on holiday. He's loving the fact that he's there and he loves the ice cream sandwiches. There's always money in the banana stand. Oh my gosh. I mean, like more and more stuff keeps coming to me about season one. Job trying in furious anger to throw this letter Michael wanted him to deliver out in the ocean and the wind catching the letter, throwing it back. And this was a horrible gesture. They burned down the banana stand and that was an insurance thing. And oh crap, I don't know. So many great moments. So Arrested Development season one is awesome. Number one, season two. This one is my favorite. Personally, it's my favorite because it's the first season of this show I watched. And it just absolutely got me hooked. I mean, right from the beginning where Tobias wants to join the Blue Man group and he paints himself freaking blue. Are you freaking kidding me? Gosh, the whole thing with that is just, just hilarious. Was it season two where he was Mrs. Featherbottom? <laughs> And let's not forget Buster losing his hand. The fact that they had jokes before he lost his hand. Other fantastic moments where Buster tries to escape the army and goes to Mexico, but really he's just gone down the street as he's living with his mother's maid and their family. And there's the hand chair that he had that his mom gave away and he's looking at the hand chair. Oh, I, I never thought I'd miss a hand so much. The hilarity of the fact that they would foreshadow the joke before they got to the joke. He's sitting on this bench where he loses his hand and, you know, has the army thing on there. But the way he blocks it, it says arm off. I mean, all these foreshadowing moments that he's going to lose his hand to a freaking seal of all things that a loose seal, a loose seal, a loose seal, a loose seal would bite off his hand. I mean, ugh, I don't know, man. The more I think about season two, season two is where it's at for me. This to me was the show and it's absolute prime. It knew its identity. Cancellation was not on the horizon to the best of my knowledge. This show just, it was in its prime and it had a blast. So season two is my favorite. Now, when you take a look at Arrested Development, all the seasons that we got thus far, how would you rank them worst to best? I look forward to your ranking in the comments below and having Arrested Development conversations with you. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button to become a Durbanian and hit the bell by the subscribe button so you're notified the next time I drop a movie review, ranking video, theological analysis, or anything else I do here. I'm Durbin. Thanks for checking out Durbania.